this is Joy at Red Pine Quilt Shop. Today we're going to actually show you how to make a dimensional bow tie block. These are super cool. You end up with a fun little block that actually has a dimensional bow tie, not just in the center but also on the ends. And we're going to walk you through how to make these. So you're going to start out with a square of fabric. It can be any size square as long as it's a square and I'm actually working with a five inch square of fabric. And Nate's gonna actually, he's my cameraman today, he's gonna swing around here and kind of hang over my shoulder so that you guys can see um, the view of how I'm folding it as if it were actually right in front of you. So lay your fabric square right side up and you're gonna fold it actually towards you. So you're gonna you're gonna fold it towards you. So I have the folded edge away from me and I have the raw edges towards me. And I'm gonna fold it in half. I'm just lining these edges up, folding it in half. You can put a little crease in it here. And then we'll go ahead and flip it back. So I've basically made a little pleat and I'm gonna go ahead and tuck a pin in the upper left hand corner and I've basically made a little pleat. So um, fold it towards you in half, fold it back and then put your pin in, in the upper left hand corner and you should never be pinning through more than three layers of fabric so be careful as you start to go here sometimes you can catch another fold by accident. So three layers and I'm going to rotate this a quarter turn clockwise. Then I'm going to go ahead and take and fold it down towards me again. So I'm working on the next side of the black and I'm gonna flip it back. So towards me and flip it back and then go ahead and pin that corner. So there is the next step. And again, I'm gonna rotate it a quarter of a turn and now the next side of the, of the square that I'm working on is this side. And I have this little pleat in it from the very first time that I folded the fabric. So I'm going to pull that corner because I want to open that pleat back up. And now I've got a nice straight side and I'll do the same thing again. I'll fold it towards me and fold it in half and I will fold it back. So always towards you and then back and then pin. So you can see kind of a little series of a, it's a pinwheel basically that we're form, that we're making and it's starting to form. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate it one last time clockwise a quarter turn. And now the last side that I have to fold is this one and it's actually where we pinned the very first time when we were going this way but I'm going to go ahead and kind of get that fabric smoothed out and I'm going to come right down to that very first pin and find my halfway point and this one's a little harder to get it smoothed out so you can find your halfway point and flip back so I will get her getting it to sit here. Okay, there we go. And I will put my last pin in. So now we actually have this little pinwheel that has formed. So this is our first pin, our second pin, our third pin, and there is our last pin, and it's made a little pinwheel. So what you're gonna do next is to flip this over, and you're gonna give that fabric a little pat and you see how a square and a square has basically formed inside your um, inside your little square of fabric on the back side. You get a, get a little diamond, square and a square, a little diamond that shows up here. So I'm actually going to use hand quilting thread for the next part of the process. Um, hand quilting thread is very strong, it's nice and sturdy, um, it's good from a standpoint of not being apt to tangle um, so hand quilting thread is actually a great thread for this. And this is a 40 weight um, hand quilting thread that we stock from Guterman. So we have that up on our website at www.redpinequiltshop.com. 
in a variety of different colors. So I have gone ahead and knotted my thread and I am going to start out by taking a little tiny tuck halfway down one of those folds. So I'm looking at that fold and I'm gonna find my halfway point and I'm taking just a little tiny tuck here um, to catch a little bit of that fabric. So I'm gonna take my first little tuck and then I'm gonna go ahead and jump over to the next side. So again, I'm gonna look at the corners. I'm gonna kind of find my midpoint and grab a little tuck of fabric. And I find that it's easier for me to take the tuck from the bottom to the top because then I'm not getting caught in that fabric. So I'll go ahead and take the next little tuck and I'm just gonna keep my thread on top of the block. It likes to sometimes get caught on your pins um, but I'm just going to keep it on the top of the block. I'll rotate it around and I'll take the next little tuck. Just trying to catch, you know, a few threads at about the halfway point. Doesn't have to be super, super precise, so you can kind of just eyeball it. And then I will rotate it and I'll take a tuck on the kind of the last side that we haven't stitched on but I'm going to go back to my very first side where we started out and I'm going to go back through there again and when you're done you should have another little square and a square that's formed and I'm going to actually show you on this block it's a little easier to see the thread on this one so you started out here a little tuck a little tuck a little tuck a little tuck and now you have kind of another square and a square that's actually formed. So you can go ahead now and put a finger on kind of in the center of the black and you can draw this up. And when you draw that up, you will end up with um, what kind of looks like a little flower after you draw that up. And I'm going to take and actually knot that off. So draw it up so it's nice and tight. And then I'm going to just go through once. And after you've gone through once, that's caught out of my pins here. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and the loop that forms, you guys can see that in the video. I'm going to just go ahead and go through that loop a couple of times to make a knot. So I just went through twice and now I'm going to go ahead and cinch that up and make a knot. So now I've basically knotted in the center of my little flower petal that formed. Now I want to get down to one of the corners because the next thing we're going to do is pinch these petals together. Now you can pinch them this way or you can pinch them this way, it doesn't matter. I usually just see sometimes it seems like it lays a little better one way or the other. Um, but we're going to pinch those petals together and I want to get down to the end of the petal. So I'm going to just take a little bit of a catch at the midway point. I'm just kind of traveling with my thread, I don't want to have to cut off and knot again. So I'm going to go ahead and just take a couple little tucks to get myself down to the end of the flower petal. So I just kind of wanted to travel down there with my thread and I'll go ahead and I will pinch the flower petal together. So at this point in time, there are four layers of fabric here. There's the one I traveled down, there's the other side, and then you can see the two layers here. So I will go ahead and just whip stitch this. And I'm gonna kinda take, I'm gonna kinda take quick whip stitches. I would stitch a little more closely together if this was an actual block. I'm, an, I'm gonna take big stitches. You guys should take a little bit smaller stitches. <laughs> but I'll take big stitches. And I'm just gonna whip stitch my way down to the end of the block. And I'm caught on a pin here again. I'm going to just take that pin out. I can pull him out at this point um, and get those pins out of my way. And I'm just going to take big stitches so we can get this stitched up fairly fast. Um, I would probably normally be taking stitches 
about twice as close, you know, to, for, for every one stitch I'm taking now, you should take two um, because you want to have your stitches a little closer together. Um, try to make sure that you're catching all four edges of the petals, so all four edges, two there and two there. Um, try to make sure that you're catching all of them as you go and just whip stitch down to the other end and once you get to the other end at that point in time we're going to knot off again so I'll take one here right at the very very end and then make another little another little knot okay and now I'm going to pull those last two pins. So when you're pinning these blacks, if you have small pins, smaller pins are better. Um, if you have little tiny applique pins that are only about three quarters of an inch long, they work really well. And now you end up with a very pretty dimensional bow tie black. You can actually see there's my edges of the bow tie and my center so a very very pretty dimensional bow tie black um, and you just kind of as soon as you flip it over just kind of pull these tug these tug these corners out and your bow tie will form um, so you end up with a super pretty dimensional bow tie black and a lot of the bow tie blacks that I've seen in the past that are dimensional ones the only part that actually is dimensional is that center and this one is a fully dimensional black so to press these blacks um, what I usually do is I just press along the edges because all I really want to do is set the pleat there and there and then again on the other side. So all I'm really trying to do pressing wise is setting those pleats. So I try not to ever press right down on the center. I just press on the edges to set the pleats. A five inch square will end up becoming about a three and a half inch block after you've made it. And then when I go to get ready to sew my blocks into a quilt, I usually use Roxanne's glue base to come in because it air dries quick and I'm usually at this point in time not, I don't have my iron on, um, so I want a quick a glue that's gonna, gonna air dry fair fast. And I will glue base those pleats together so that when I go to sew the black, that area is glued and it's not gonna move on me because I don't want that happening when I'm um, actually sewing my blocks together. You could sure hand stitch a little basting stitch, you know, just a shallow quarter of an inch of, of an inch seam. You could hand stitch that as well. And, um, and that would work also. So hand stitching would be good or to glue baste it. But you do wanna definitely have that pleat stabilized in some way before you go to sew your blocks together. So they're super cute blocks and they are dimensional though. Um, so you wanna make sure that you have a game plan to probably do your own quilting with these um, because they will, um, they would be something that would cause a long arm or issues because their hopping foot would get caught in those pleats. Um, so have a game plan to hand quilt it, to quilt it yourself somehow. I'm gonna actually probably with these um, just go ahead and piece them together with some sashing and then I'm gonna just stitch in the ditch and do it all myself. Um, so play around with these though, it's kind of fun. You can have them all placed so the bow ties are in the same direction. It also looks kind of fun if you flip them, you get almost kind of a wreath effect that forms. Um, so play around with the placement of your blocks. You can kind of do have some fun secondary patterns. You could certainly piece them right beside each other if you wanted, or you could use sashing. Um, and then, like I said, a stitch in the ditch would work really well from a quilting standpoint um, to quilt these out. So that is how to make dimensional bow ties. We hope you guys have fun making some of these. Um, pull some scraps out, give it a try, and um, enjoy making some fun dimensional bow tie blacks.